Hey, Ian, so I, I guess they're calling this Super El Nino now, and it, it all begins down in the Pacific, doesn't it? What's, go what's going on here? Yeah, if you think about the uh, eastern tropical Pacific, it's uh, thousands of uh, square kilometers of above normal temperatures in the water. Well, that's going to affect the air above it, and that's a domino effect that starts affecting the way that the atmosphere works around the continents and around the world itself. But if you think about the force that El Nino has, even the super El Nino, as something that's pushing the atmosphere in a certain direction, well, things tend to balance out with the atmosphere. So sooner or later, at least for brief periods of time, the atmosphere is going to push back from another direction. And lo and behold, it backs off a little bit. And areas that have been experiencing a very mild fall and early start to winter are going to experience this behemoth storm, which has affected millions of people as it pulled out of Texas and the American Deep South and is in the process of affecting everyone through the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, uh, parts of New England, and ultimately up towards the Maritimes with snow snow, wind, freezing rain, rain, ice pellets, depending on where you live. This is going to be a nasty 24-hour period right through until very late tomorrow, in fact, early Wednesday. You know, the first thing I thought as well when I see all this stuff is, is climate change. Is it, is it fair to connect El Nino with, with climate change? Well, I don't connect certainly a specific storm with climate change unless this becomes, uh, you know, a visit from the ghost of Christmas uh, future when we get this more often or not. Come and we'll talk then. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ian. Okay. Climatologist Ian Black in Ottawa.